Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun, and it it's so simple you will not believe it. This is a hydrogen atom. At 21 centimeters, the spin flips. So what it is, is the particle is in the center, but it controls a magnetic region of 21 centimeters. It's huge, 8 inches. So if you come with a magnetic influence, you can flip the spin of it. So you've, you've changed its polarity, basically. Now watch this. Remember now, you got a particle in the center with a big region around it, and if you come into that region, you're going to affect that particle. Okay, so here's what we got. The particle, but it has this in front of it, so it creates this wave. And if you had a pulse red laser, you'd have bip, 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 and that is exactly what you have. Each one of these is a ball with a particle way back inside of it, but it influences a region in front of it making a wave. No, it's as simple as this. This is the wave you're seeing as a wave. Yes, absolutely. And everything in front of it has to concuss and get out of the way of this magnetic wave, because they are magnetic particles as well. But inside is the particle that is the particle. And that particle, just as it smashes into the Venturi, creates this particle right here. All right. And there is your dark matter, is the dark, and the white is your explosive particle. And as it hits the Venturi, which is right there, it's accelerating. It's obviously accelerating. It's obviously a particle. It's obviously ex creating energy when it concusses. The black particle that I just showed you from below here, the black and the white, the black particle literally removes itself from the violence. It literally gets around here and comes back in down here. It is not attached completely to the white particle down here. You see, it is attached. We can see it. We can see it. They're stuck together. That is literally gravity, the black. It's gravity. It's dark matter. It's not concussive. It's not reactive. It doesn't absorb. It doesn't emit. It doesn't interact. All it does is attract. That's gravity. And it is not 100% attached to the other particle that we see it attached to now. They will separate, and here they are separating right now. All right, basically this is it. Light from the red laser. Bip, 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 bip. Light accelerating from the red laser. Zzz, going through the Venturi, which is here, two round drums. They have to, all these big balls have to force down and crush through there. At that point, the the electron showers, which are here, they're coming this way towards us in this picture, and these are what the particles looked like just before they entered the Venturi. All right, so they were together in this configuration, and then they broke apart and just exploded into black and white, and the white, black surrounded the white, so they are completely separate particles. All right, what I just showed you was the light accelerating because of the Venturi, and the balls have to crush down. They're huge magnetic really regions with those little particles, just like this, which are coming through. Now, at this point, the black separates from the white. It's, it's completely obvious. If you can't see that, I don't, know, I, I don't know what to tell you other than to go get some kind of visual aid because there is absolutely no darkness here and the blacks come back together here. So that means this started out as light, which was a photon. It's separated here from the black and the white and apparently into electrons first more than likely, which would be like just that, half of a photon. And then here, the dark matter particle said, I'm getting out of the way and it goes around and the white particle says I'm going to just push everybody that's what's called push to shove and it's electrons do that and that's why they're so energetic but the dark particles always want to be involved with the very energetic ones but they, they there's only certain amount of energy that they can withstand and this the Venturi was the killer that's the killer that separated them right in here is 100% electrons. And I don't think there's any other way that you can create 100% electrons because the black particles 
are always following with the white particles. The only reason they, t they separated is because they became so concussive here. And it's because it's, it is extremely strong light, which is a laser. It's, it's much more intense than light coming from the sun. But you could concentrate light coming from the sun just as good as you can a laser, too, doing some kind of little mechanical devices, mirrors, and so forth. And yet you could get an extreme interaction here. And I don't see why you couldn't create completely separated electrons here. And if you could create completely separated electrons, they want to be back together with these dark matter particles. If we could figure a source of somewhere creating a, a way of diverting them down through like, you know, basically like a wire type of situation, a, a wave guide, a field, something to drag those electrons into some other um, battery, really. It's basically what it would do, it would dump them into a battery. Then we could pull them back out when we need them. Because you can't get these things separated like this. It's very, very hard. This is what you're doing when you're charging a battery. A battery is the battery itself has all of these little buggers, the white ones have gone out and done some work and have attracted to some other black one somewhere way off in ground, what they call earth ground, basically. So if we just had a batch of these, we could send them out to do anything we want. And if we can get them to break away from the black ones and separate all by themselves, right? there's, there's nothing here, there's nothing that just sits here. Mirrors and focus. Of course, you have to have the laser, which t does draw power. Um, and it would be very interesting to see how much we could recoup over here. If you put in like one watt over here and you got 10 watts back over here, that's not too bad. <laughs> you know, even if you got two watts out of here, so you could build as much as you want, you double your power. However, I'm just, that's a speculation. I, I don't know, maybe we only get a tenth of a watt out here. I have no idea. But it looks to me like you're creating extreme energy and you are separating the, the part that's the energetic part from the part you don't want. This is what you want. So, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. I guess time will only tell, but we've we got to start looking at it. Okay, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, talking about electronics and atomic nucleuses and uh, energy and electrons and electron flood theory. Now, I'm going to play this right here. This is uh, amazing. They've got like almost 8 million hits on this. And this is about, this is by Night Hawk and Light. And it's absolutely fabulous. It shows how interactive and reactive copper is because it's completely encased with uh, uh, um, electrons. And that's what I study is electrons. Electron flood theory says there is nothing but electrons. And the periodic chart is completely wrong. <laughs> there, there is no such thing as an atom. There is nothing more than snowflake particles. And they, are, they consist of molecules building up into different materials. I'm going to explain it extremely simple when you get down to the bottom of it. Now, this is, I'm going to let it play as I show you my credentials. Uh, I didn't work in the business, so to speak, of, you know, um, academia or anything. But now, what he's showing is a ton of copper. And as he goes next to it with magnets, it affects from the copper. The copper has its own set of, of electrons. And it pushes back against the magnetic, watch this. See how slow that dropped? That's real time. All right? It's going through a fluid of stuff. Now, I understand this quite well. This, I just want to show you some of my stuff. Look at it. Look at it. It's dragging it through that fluid. That's a very strong magnet. I can show all this stuff. I did all that stuff, trust me. I know I did it all from the top to the bottom. And I, then I did it not only understand the chemistry and the, all of the quantum and the, all of that business and 
the shapes of the molecules and the bond angles and all of that. I went beyond that into the 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 um, look. Did you see that? Watch this. I love this. <laughs> it, there's a blanket of electrons, and this has its blanket of electrons. They push to shove, and that's what the Earth is doing right now: is spinning through with our electrons through a soup of electrons that are out here, and they're pushing to shove. You see this? How fabulous that is! Now, again, I understand it all the way down to the atomic levels and light and everything. Now. This guy's fabulous. Now, in addition to that, I went to the levels of, you know, all the way down into the heat and how the heat reacts and different temperatures and how many extra electrons it takes on and so forth. And it ends up, no matter what you do, electrons are heat. Heat are electrons. And they turn into electricity. Eventually, the heat exchange can be converted into an electric discharge. And you can use it. That's all it is. Heat is nothing more than electric power. I, I, uh, I, I love this stuff and I worked on it and I had a business that was in electronics. So it's not something I'm really doing a lot of guessing on. And now with the new light research that I've done with uh, Rod Warren, it, it pretty much proves the things I've been saying. So, here we go. Okay, my friends, I'm just going to lay it on the line. If you're a physicist or a scientist of any stripe, you have to reconsider the atomic structure. All right, the nucleus is not one big positive chunk and then a bunch of little negatives floating around. No. This is the experiments we did that prove, literally prove, and I will show you, I can prove what I'm saying, not just guesses. We accelerated light using a red laser pulsed and put it through a venturi, which is two cylindrical drums. It has to pass through. When it does, the light has to accelerate, which is seen doing. It's it turned into a particle, which we see, at the venturi it, it can be explosive as hell and the dipole nature of light becomes evident and the black particles roll around and come back after the white particles settle down all will be shown photons are what is emitted from light and the laser electrons are half of photons they're dipoles back to back just like two bar magnets when they concuss the black particle of the electron separates from the concussive part of the particle. I am going to show that in elegance. Simplicity. It's very, very simple. All right, I'm not going to get too deep into this. These are muons and these are electron showers. In electron flood theory, those two are attached together. And here's what they look like. The muon, which is the dark particle, and then the electron, which in, if it was just sitting there, would sit there just like that, not exploding into showers. Back to back, they create photons. 1837 of these dipoles make a proton. 1838 make a neutron. When they, the light itself impacts, it, can, it separates, and I will show you, and it creates electron showers. They're exactly correct. It's just they don't know how to do this. We did it by using laser light instead of using f protons head to head they smashed gigantic particles together and then they dig through the debris and they're going to be there for the rest of their lives trying to find the smallest particles we started with the smallest particles then we broke them apart and then I'll, I'll show you right now I'm going to show you the dark matter and that is dark matter they never knew it was there they still don't know it's there it's attached to the electrons and the electrons create the showers let's see it in its magnificent glory okay my friends as far as i'm concerned i have shown the dark matter is the muons and it's the black ball and the whites all that spray is the electron showers exactly what they're looking for high voltage particles 
concussion cause this kind of reaction. The black ball does nothing, and that is, in my mind, that is the dark energy and the dark matter, and it is a muon. The, this is the concussive stuff. Now, that leads me to the, you know, well, I, that's, what I have to decide is how is that atom arranged? Is that atom arranged with the electron in a ball attached to the muon as we saw? Or is that strictly when we saw that a, a reaction to the compression? And I think so. I believe this is what the actual electron looks like. Is in the center is a dark spot and or surrounding it is the energy. When and, and half and half is what it's made of. When it concusses, you, that's when you see the ball separate from the black. Now, only electrons exist, whether they're this or they're that. I don't know. But it, it, in my estimation, 1837 equals a proton. That's, you take a proton's weight divided by an electron's weight, and you have 1837 of them equal a protein. 1838 equal a neutron. Therefore, you can have all kinds of isotopes, which you do. They know about them. They're half-life here, and this one there, and this has got decay and nuclear this, and da-da-da. Uh, they can't account for any of that stuff. I can account for every bit of it. There's only certain frequencies, resonance stable frequencies, and it appears that they, every certain number of hertz, it goes and everything goes flopping all of a sudden, and they lock in, and it's, it appears to be right in this range, 1837, 1838, uh, because that's the most stable particles that they find. However, in between each one of those, this is not right at all. You see this chunk here? It's just, what's this doing in the middle? That's the transition metals. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is your valence shells, and that's the only thing that matters. These are the tr transition metals that jump up and down. They take and they give and they take and they give. They're really not in amongst this, the rest of the periodic chart at all, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and they, therefore, they have, a, like copper, has just an enormous cloud of electrons. I think I showed this. I have to be perfectly honest with you. I, get, I did this for a few days. I've been working on this. I totally lost what I even presented. I'm sure I showed you the electrons accelerating. I'm sure, I'm sure I showed you the particle, which is the four-banger, like that. And then I'm sure I showed you that it's separated and the white showers. I'm, I, I know I must have shown all that stuff. But the point being is that there is nothing but electrons. And they have this type of an interaction that is, you know, so elegant. It's amazing. And to do it with these number of particles, it's, just, it's silly. And they know there's all these isotopes in between. They never accounted for any of that stuff. You know, it, you know it, not in any serious way. They just sort of fluff right over it. You're saying these are gig gigantic particles. Of course they can you can lose a, a, a little bit of pieces over here, a piece of there. How can it be how can you do that? They're electrons, my friends. Electron flood theory. Mud Fossil University developed that theory oh, fifty years ago. <laughs> and the only way I could prove it was by showing the actual light experiments, and they literally prove it.